Did you know that despite being written over 1,500 years by 40 different men, the Bible tells one cohesive story, a story of one man, one cross, one Savior. It is the simple fact that sets the stage for exploring the unity of the Bible. Hi, I'm Pastor Tricia, and today I want to show you how these 66 books that make up the Bible come together and point us to one event in history. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so that you won't miss future teachings. Now let's jump right in. So often we look at the Bible and we see a bunch of different Bible stories that come together in the Bible, right? You may have your favorite, like one of my favorites is Daniel and the lion's den, or how about the three Hebrew children, or the woman at the well in the New Testament. We also hear often about the Good Samaritan who comes along and helps his neighbor. These stories all seem like separate stories, but that's not true. Each of these stories come together within this one book to make up one unified story. So let's look at that and see how it's broken down. We talked about in a previous video that the Bible's divided into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. These can also be called the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Under the Old Covenant, the people were looking for something that was yet to happen. And because Jesus had not yet come to the earth, they had to live a very different way of faith than we do because they were looking forward to a promise. So they had rules to keep, they had sacrifices to make, and their relationship with God was built that way. In the Old Testament, it breaks down into the books of the law, which are the first five books of the Bible, and then we have history books that tell us their story and show us how God brought them from where they were to where everything that they went through as he pointed them toward the coming of Jesus Christ. We read about the fall of man and how sin entered the world and how we got separated from God in the Old Testament. And then we have the poetry in the Old Testament, Psalms, Proverbs, the Song of Solomon. These, story, these, these books of the Bible point us to the emotions the people felt, to what they were walking through and how they were handling it. And then we have the books of the prophets, the major and minor prophets. Now, that doesn't mean one's more important than the other. It really has to do with the length of the books. So don't let that make you think, oh, well, it's more important that I read this prophet because they were major and this one was minor. They all fit together to point to a coming event or to a few coming events because the first event they're pointing to is the coming of Jesus Christ. And then you have books in the Old Testament that actually point us toward the second coming of Christ as well. So the Old Testament is made up of the law, the history, the poetry, and the major and minor prophets. And with that, we have what was going on before Jesus came. And then you have what they call a four year, 400 sorry, year period of silence. That 400 years, God wasn't silent. He was doing lots of things as he prepared for the new covenant that would come as a part of the New Testament, the coming of his son to the earth. See, he looked at us and he saw that we were separated from him because of the sin of Adam and because of the sin of man. It separated us from him and he wanted relationship with us. So he wanted to find a way to make that happen. So in his perfect plan, he made a way. And in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we read about that plan. He sends his son to the earth, and we get to see his son come and be born, to grow up into a man, to live a life doing miracles and ministry and setting captives free. And then he pays the ultimate price for you and for me. He dies on a cross to defeat sin and to give us hope. But he doesn't stay on that cross. He goes into a tomb for three days, and then he rises, and he walks on this earth again, and then he ascends into heaven. At, at the ascension into heaven, we get the start of the book of Acts. This is the story of the church. This is how the church came to be, and what the church today is supposed to look like. This is the blueprint for the church being developed here and showing us how the church come together and was about the people. So the book of Acts is a history book in the New Testament.
and it tells us how the church started and what the church looks like today. And then we jump, we're going to jump all the way over to the end where we have the book of Revelation because that's the prophecy of the New Testament. Book of Revelation scares people because they think there's so many things hidden in there, but the book of Revelation actually tells us what is to come, and it often overlaps some of the Old Testament prophets as they pointed to that time frame as well. Some of that, yes, we're seeing fulfilled. Some of that is still to come. It is an amazing book to read and study and just understand what is to come and how it all fits together. And then we have... In the New Testament, the rest of the books make up the what is called the epistles, a big churchy word to say the letters to the churches or to the saints. So these are letters that were written by the apostles and the disciples to the churches that were in the area at the time to guide them on how to do church, how to do ministry together, how to live this Christian life. And it is in these books, these letters that we find our guidebook. Have you ever wanted a rule book or an instruction manual for living this Christian life? Well, guys, it's in here. In here is your rule book. This Bible will tell you how to live this Christian life and that you're not alone to live it because back in Acts, we found out that God sent us somebody to help us. He sent us the Holy Spirit. So in this Bible, yes, we have 66 books. But all 66 books are pointing to one thing. In the Old Testament, they are looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, of Jesus Christ. And they're telling you that he is coming. There is a promised child coming that will save the world. And in the New Testament, we see him come. And then we begin to look back to the cross as our hope, knowing that Jesus died and rose again, and he is our hope. It points us to the finished work of the cross. So the Bible is one book telling one story about one man, one Savior. Today, I want to ask you to drop me a comment. Let me know what your favorite Bible story is and why. And don't forget to hit the like Subscribe, share, share, and share again so that we can grow together in this journey.